Hey everyone, welcome back and a happy 2021. I don't know about you, but I am very happy to wave 2020 goodbye. I mean, what a year that was. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that you are well and you are safe. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my favorite skincare products from 2020. So I don't know about you, but I love these types of videos. I love to know what people's roundup of products are from the year. Now, last year I fell in love with so many different skincare products. As you guys know, I really did fall in love with the Drunk Elephant brand, but don't worry, that's definitely not going to be the focus of today's video. I have got a good range of various different products that I've tried throughout 2020 that I think are absolutely great and that you will also love too. I'm going to start with cleansers. Now at work, someone gave me a bottle of The Ordinary Squalane Cleanser as my secret Santa and I was so happy with it. I thought that whoever decided to gift me that obviously knows me really well because that is just such um, a reliable gift to give me that I know that I will use. So I was really, really pleased with that one. And it did um, remind me of how much I love this cleanser. I think that the Ordinary Squalane Cleanser is just so good. And the reason why I like it is because I think that it's good for every different skin type. The cleanser is gentle. It will remove makeup and SPF. It's non-commodogenic. It's gently hydrating, but it won't leave an oily residue on the skin. So you can even get away with just rinsing this off and without having to wipe over with a washcloth afterwards if that's not your thing. Even though this is from The Ordinary, I don't think that this is necessarily, it is an affordable cleanser. I think that The Ordinary products started off really affordable and I feel like they're slowly, um, things are starting to come in and the prices are starting to creep up a little bit. But still, when you compare them to many other brands out there, they are super affordable and this is still very good value for money. I just wish that, um, the full size one, because this is a very small container. I wish that the full size one was like eight pounds for the full size. I think that that would be a really, really good price. But in the UK, it costs something like 13, 14 pounds, which is super affordable, but not as affordable as I would like it to be. But nonetheless, it's a fantastic cleanser and it is in my roundup of the best cleansers of the year. Now, in every category that I'm going to mention in today's video, I'm going to give you two options. So I'm going to give you one that's maybe like mid price point to the higher price point and I'm always going to try and give you something affordable as well. The second cleanser that I want to talk about is the Crave Beauty Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. I fell in love with this cleanser when I used it in the summer. It definitely lives up to the hype and I absolutely loved it. It's since run out and I haven't got a bottle of it with me now, but I would love to repurchase it again. The only reason I don't repurchase it is because it costs double the price in the UK as to what it costs in America. So if you are based in the US or you're based in Korea and it's easier to get hold of it, then I definitely recommend that you buy this because it's really, really good value for money. This isn't fragrance, but I love the non-fragranced smell of this cleanser. I feel like it's really thorough but super, super gentle and nice and hydrating on my skin. I love the packaging. It's just an all-round gorgeous cleanser that I think would be suitable for most skin types. Moving on to vitamin C, I'm going to get started with the By Wish Trend Pure Vitamin C 21.5% Advanced Serum. My current preference for vitamin C serums is ones that contain L-ascorbic acid, which is the purest form of vitamin C and the most effective form of vitamin C. They're often quite expensive and they oxidize quite quickly, so it's better to find one that works for you and use it consistently every day so you can use it up before it oxidizes. I feel like this one is really, really good value for money. And even though this is 21.5%, which is actually quite strong, I found it pretty gentle on the skin. If, however, you are new to vitamin C serums, then they do have a version that comes in 15%, which is milder, and I would recommend trying that one and then moving on to this one next. Even so, I did find this really gentle on my skin personally. It didn't give me any irritation whatsoever, but what I really liked about this serum is it really is not sticky at all. That's the only drawback with L-ascorbic acid serums is they can tend to be a little bit sticky on the skin, but this 
was super lightweight, water-like and not sticky at all. So if you have oily skin and you're looking for something that's super lightweight that isn't going to weigh your skin down, then this would be a good option for you. The second mid-priced vitamin C serum that I want to mention is the Drunk Elephant C Firma Day Serum, which contains 15% L-ascorbic acid and pumpkin ferment extract. All in all, I think that this is a great price compared to some other vitamin C serums that are more expensive. This contains pomegranate enzymes as well as the pumpkin ferment extract. And what that does is it will just smooth down down the top surface of your skin so it does give my skin a lovely smooth finish and a really nice glow. Moving on to retinol, I'm going to get started with the Ordinary 1% Retinol in Squalane. I did a review on this which I will link up above. The 1% is the strongest one and that is the one that I have used and I find that not to be too strong but I am an experienced retinol user so my skin is used to retinol but if you are a newbie then I suggest that you start with one of the milder versions. They've got an 0.2% and an 0.5% and then the 1% is the strongest. I think that the squalane is a really good ingredient to pair with the retinol because it just helps moisturize the skin. The drawback to using a retinol is that it can make the skin a little bit dry and red and flaky so I think that the squalane just helps keep the skin nice and moisturized when you use it at night. My other recommendation and the one that I'm using right now is the Drunk Elephant A Passioni which is a very strong wonderful retinol product. The first time I used this my face went very red I used it just on its own. I used it for three nights in a row because I just wanted to test out how strong it was. I don't recommend doing that. My face became very red and very sore and irritated and sensitive. And that just shows that how strong this retinol is. The great thing about it though is that you can buffer it very easily by mixing it with other Drunk Elephant products. For instance, you can quite easily just mix it with some of the moisturizer or some of the face oil just to water it down so it's not quite so strong whilst your skin gets used to it. The reason why I love this is because it's got so many other additional ingredients in that benefit the skin. And out of all the retinols that I've tried, I found that this has made the most difference to my skin. When it comes to exfoliators, I think that the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant is one of the best products out there. I think that this is probably one of the most famous products out of the Paula's Choice range and it really is an excellent exfoliator. Now salicylic acid is better for acne prone skin or oily or congested skin. My skin is personally on the combination side so I just tend to use this product on my T-zone where I get a lot of congestion. This has definitely been one of the best products for unclogging my pores that I have ever used. I will say that if I use this all over my face it does make the rest of my skin feel a tiny little bit dry. That being said I would say that this is quite a balanced formula and it has got hydrating ingredients in there so if I put some rich moisturizer on top then it does help balance out my skin but I wouldn't use this all over my face regularly. If however you've got oily skin, acne prone skin then I think that this should definitely be your go-to exfoliating acid. The next one I'm going to talk about is actually quite a new product. The good thing about exfoliating acids though is they tend to show results on the skin very quickly so unlike vitamin C or retinol which takes a bit longer to show results, exfoliating acids pretty much give instant results. So I was able to add this product by Dr. Dennis Gross into my list quite quickly. And I have to say I was super impressed with the exfoliating products. In addition to this one, which is the exfoliating moisturizer, I've also got the ultra gentle exfoliating pads. I absolutely love them. I think that they give great results on the skin, but I wanted to recommend this one out of the two. Now this is a very lightweight runny moisturizer that almost has a lotion texture to it. You only need a tiny bit and this contains seven different types of exfoliating acids. Now when I first used this I could tell that it was going to be quite powerful on my skin but the next day I woke up and I had zero irritation. I was also concerned about whether this would be moisturizing enough on my skin. I have to say this is definitely lovely and moisturizing on the skin whilst being nice and lightweight as well. In addition to the seven different exfoliating acids, this has also got ceramides in, there's hyaluronic acid, there's squalane to help moisturize the skin. So you really are getting a whole bunch of skincare benefits in this product. It's like your serum, your moisturizer, and your exfoliating product in one. Next up is eye creams, and I want to give a shout out to the Glossier Bubble Wrap, which I think is an excellent, affordable eye cream. I also did a review on that product, which I will link up above. The reason why I think that this is such a great eye cream is because it's super lightweight, it's fragrance free which is perfect to use around the eye area. The winning ingredients in this are hyaluronic acid, it contains peptides, it contains avocado oil for moisture and it also contains blueberry extract which will work as an antioxidant to protect your skin against pollution. It's super lightweight, sits really nicely under sunscreen and I just think that it's a good all-round affordable eye cream. 
My second favourite from 2020 has to be the Drunk Elephant Sea Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream. I absolutely love this eye cream. I think that it's so good. I love that it's got five stable forms of vitamin C and it's also got eight peptides which will help firm the skin. I think that that's a really good ingredient combination to use as an eye cream. So it will brighten the eye area as much as a skincare product can. It's got such a lovely creamy texture. It absorbs into the eye area very nice and it's not irritating at all. Most importantly, it sits really nicely under sunscreen and makeup. Moving on to Essence products, I want to give a shout out to the Neogen Real Ferment Micro Essence, which I think is an absolutely lovely Korean essence. This works very well for all skin types, even sensitive skin types, and it will just help brighten the skin work on fine lines, and it will also give you really lightweight hydration. I love using this all year round, especially in the summer, because it is so lightweight and water-like, which is exactly what I like an essence to be. My second favourite from the year is the Light Salon Boost Cleanse and Recovery Spray. Now they market this more as a tonic and less of an essence, but for me this works perfectly as the essence step in your skincare routine. The reason why I like this so much is because it will balance the pH of the skin, it's hydrating and it's also antibacterial as well. I find this a very unique type of product because it's nice and calming on the skin, it's pH balanced, it's good for all different skin types, but particularly those with oily skin because it will just help rebalance and calm the skin. In terms of moisturizers, I have come to learn that I definitely prefer a slightly lighter moisturizer. One of my favorites was the Inky List Q10, which they actually say is a serum, but I actually feel like it's more of a lightweight moisturizer or lotion type product. Now, considering this is such an affordable product from the Inky List, I feel like it's got so many benefits for the skin. Q10 or CoQ10, as it's otherwise known, is a very good antioxidant for the skin. So if you're looking for something that's going to protect your skin from pollution during the day, and perhaps you can't tolerate a vitamin C serum, then this could be a really good option for you. In addition, this has got some supporting antioxidants of soy extract and vitamin E as well. There's even peptides, squalane and hyaluronic acid in this, so this has got so many different benefits for the skin. Out of all the Inky List products, I definitely think that that's one that you should look out for. My other favourite moisturiser this year has to be the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. I was surprised when I started using this for the first time because I wasn't expecting it to be a gel moisturiser. In the past, I didn't like gel moisturisers because I found that they were always just a bit sticky on the skin. This is definitely not sticky at all. Even though it's a gel texture, it's lovely and creamy. As you're probably getting to know, I absolutely love peptides on my skin. I just think that they're really good at rebuilding and repairing the skin. They work very well on fine lines and wrinkles, but they don't cause any irritation on the skin. And this is absolutely packed with peptides and many other skin replenishing ingredients. And because it's nice and light, it's perfect for use during the summer, but I also find that it's rich enough to use even during the winter as well. I often use this during the day because I do want something slightly lighter, but I even like to use it in the evening and pair it with the A. Passioni retinol because peptides and retinols work very well together in your routine. The last category that I'm going to cover in today's video is sunscreen. That is obviously the most important part of our skincare routines. I always lecture people about the importance of using sunscreen, but as you guys already know, it is so important. So many of my friends ask me about retinol recommendations, exfoliating acid recommendations, and I know that they're not willing to wear a sunscreen every single day. So in that case, I always say, don't use the retinol, don't use the exfoliating acids because they are going to make your skin more sensitive to daylight. But even if you aren't using those types of products and you want to look after your skin, then the best thing that you can do is wear a sunscreen every day of SPF 30 or higher. When it comes to sunscreen, I think that the ones that are most comfortable to use are usually the Korean versions. This year, I've been using a couple that are a combination of chemical and physical sunscreens. I've been using the Thank You Pharma SPF 50, which is a combination of physical and mineral, and I really like that, but the only thing about that is it does make my skin look quite shiny. Don't get me wrong, I do love a glow, but that is definitely more on the shiny side. Now, a recent one that I've fallen in love with and has made the list is the COSRX Aloe Soothing Sunscreen SPF 50 PA++++. Now, this has only got three pluses. The maximum is four pluses, but it's still an SPF 50. This is also a combination of physical and chemical sunscreens. I really like it because it's super lightweight on the skin and it doesn't leave any white cast. 
And I don't like a sunscreen that is too matte either. I do like it to give me a little bit of a glow, but I don't want it to make me look greasy or shiny either. And I feel like this works just perfectly for my skin type. I like to slather this stuff on and apply plenty of it. And I can do that with this one and it doesn't leave any white cast on the skin and it just hits the spot perfectly. Another reason to love this is because it's also super affordable as well. The only thing I don't really like about it, to be honest, is the packaging. I don't think the packaging is so great and it does contain a very small amount of fragrance. It doesn't cause my skin any irritation and because this has got the aloe in, it will soothe the skin. But if you are particularly allergic or you don't want any form of fragrance in your sunscreen, then this might not be the best option for you. Another Korean sunscreen that made the list is the Crave Be The Sun. SPF 50 PA++++. This is such a nice sunscreen, but like I mentioned with the cleanser, it's double the price in the UK compared to what it is in Korea and in the US. I think this retails at like $20 or $25 in the US, which is a really, really great price. The packaging super cute. In addition, this has also got vitamin C and resveratrol in it. Both of those are antioxidants, which will help power up the sunscreen. I wouldn't rely on a sunscreen that contains some vitamin C though. I always use a proper vitamin C serum that I know that's going to give me the protection that I need. So if my sunscreen has got a little bit of vitamin C in as well, I just consider that a bonus. I just love this because it's nice and moisturizing and lightweight and it gives a lovely finish on the skin. In terms of this Crave Beauty sunscreen, I definitely think that it's better for the normal to slightly dehydrated skin types. If your skin is on the super oily side and you apply plenty of this, which I recommend that you do, even though it is quite a lightweight fluid finish, it is still quite moisturizing on the skin. So if you have oily skin and you're looking for something super lightweight, then I definitely recommend that you try the Biore UV Watery Essence, which I think is one of the lightest sunscreens on the market. So that is my roundup of the best skincare products from 2020. I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video.